I wanted to have a clear view of the beginning of the parade. So I picked a good spot a few blocks away from Parkside Avenue on 52nd Street. This is the second and last part of the two-part series of Philadelphia's Juneteenth Parade 2022. Towards the end of this video, you will see Hewitt's first impromptu interview he conducted with an American about the state of affairs of Pan-Africanism. Enjoy, y'all. Nice. 
made it. You made it. Made it. Yeah, he made it. But it was hard to find a parking spot. We you walked. Know? We got walk a whole lot of blocks to go get our van. I, I I got it down at 48. Yeah, 48th 40, Street. 48, 48 Street. that's where we at. Yeah, about 48 Street. Yeah, yeah. I hope you enjoy yourself. Have a nice day. You too. Okay, Thank you got it. This was the family that met at Parkside. Here at, uh, I am at the, the uh, Udu, um, not Udu, here I am at Juneteenth. I'm becoming a member of uh, African Black American radio station. It's WURD. I'm gonna flip it. Yeah. This is a uh, this is a uh, great thing for me uh, to to come here and become part of the community. And I'm sure I would I would be able to promote you with daily work on your team. Um, uh, my health and fitness program. Um, I think I'm connecting with the right people in this city of Philadelphia. Yeah. Right here. Yes, here I am. I got a ticket to the American Revolution. I'm gonna find here some black stories in the American Revolution. Thank you. American Museum Revolution. You get some black stories. You are Thank you. Thank you. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Coming up next is Hewitt's first impromptu interview with an American about the state of affairs of Pan-Africanism. Yeah, for sure. Excuse me, sir. Uh, I just want to know what is it to flag about. Um, my name is Hewitt James, mm -hmm. and I represent Hewitt's Daily Workout Routine. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a, a health and fitness program mm -hmm. and I use this as an opportunity to exercise my legs mm -hmm. as, as, as a walking routine. Okay. So I, I, I saw this flag up on 57, 52nd Street where the parade started it. Mm -hmm. But and I wanted to figure out what is it all about. Okay. So can you Alright well hopefully you can hear me over the music but uh, this flag right here was um, this flag right here was established by an organization called the UNIA, the Universal Negro Improvement uh, Association, and uh, his founder, Marcus Garvey, and uh, a couple of his other uh, members, they came up with the colors and the, uh, and the ideas associated with the colors. So red is for the blood of our people that was shed throughout the, uh, you know, the years of slavery and um, our war with you know, uh, oppression. And the black is for the people. The black is representative of the people. That's right. And our strength. And the green is representative of the land. You know, and that's not just the land in Africa, but everywhere that black people have, uh, you know, established civilization long before, you know, others came along and uh, inserted themselves in our affairs. So uh, that's really what it represents. Is just uh, because during the time when this flag was created, uh, the black people didn't. Black people in America specifically did not have a flag that represented us. We didn't feel that we, we didn't. We had no connection to the red, white, and blue. Uh, so 
with the founding and establishment of this flag, you know, that gave us a sense of identity amongst ourselves, uh, but also a way to connect with other people who share our background around the world. Because other countries, people of other, other nations have, have flags, but the black man in America never had a flag before this one. So would you say this is for the African diaspora? Yes, this yeah, so this is the this is actually known as the Pan African flag. The, the yeah. Pan African that's, flag. That's that's one of the names it's known as. Yeah. So I I must really uh I I am very I I I, I must really I I, I I I really must be very apologetic to myself not to know this before. Mm -hmm. I I've known quite a few things of mm -hmm. course in life and um I, I didn't know exactly what this is. So I would admit to you that I did not know oh, that yeah. this represented the Pan-African flag. Yes, I know sir. the Rastafarian flag because yeah. I'm from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, from so St. Vincent the Grenadines. Yellow, oh, the red, right, green, right, yeah. right. And I, this one missed me, mm -hmm. but yeah. these important things can't miss you for life. For sure, for sure. And it's very significant to, uh, you know, specifically to a lot of us here in America. Right. But, um, you know, through the work that a lot of uh, what Marcus Garvey had done in the past and the people who continued on his legacy have done up to now, we've helped to connect with people across the world with uh, these colors, you know what I mean? So our brothers and sisters in the UK, our brothers and sisters in, uh, you know, in, in France and in, in, in Ghana, and, you know, in these various places where a lot of us may, may never travel, but we, have, but we now have a connection and a, a feeling, you know, a family that we can have now with, this, with these colors. I have a question. One more question before the music strikes up. Uh -huh. What do you think is the state of affair of Pan-Africanism Pan and the African diaspora at this state, at this stage in, in our civilization? I think right now, more than ever, uh, we, are, we are more aware of each other. We're more aware of each other than we ever have been before. That's what I think, uh, you know, as a positive factor. Uh, to, to the state of affairs. We're more aware of each other. Uh, we, we're, we're actually, there are some of us who are actually working to create uh, and establish bridges, you know, that, that allow us to uh, work with each other and allow us to build with one another. And, um, you know, there, there are some people that I know personally who have helped to establish, uh, you know, structures uh, and, and foundational things in the motherland and other places. So, you know, there's a lot of good things going on. The, uh, you know, as far as like the things that we need to work on, we definitely need to work on uh, just really uh, having a better understanding of each other uh, and, and being, being sensitive to the differences in our cultures. Because even though we are, um, we, we do come together under the flag of Pan-Africanism, you know, we have so many different nuances to our culture and we, we need to start to learn uh, to have respect for, for each other in that way. Sort of a kind of a sort of a tribalism that, yeah, that yeah. have existed since yeah. after slavery was abolished. Yeah. We have this sort of a, a, a implicit tribalism yeah. between African Americans yeah. and Caribbeans yeah. and Africans. Tribalism. And that sort of a tribalism mm -hmm. is that one thing that was supposed to have destroyed, been destroyed mm -hmm. after slavery was abolished. Yeah. But it seemed that somehow we have been able to, that tribalism have been able to keep us apart. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's, I mean, that's mainly because, I mean, for one, it, it's the distance between us. The distance, a lot of us may never travel to the, uh, to the Caribbean. They may never, uh, you know, get to go to uh, a place like uh, Trinidad and Tobago or Guyana or, you know, any of these places that may seem obscure to some of us, but many people call home who look like us, uh, you know, but there's different cultures and different ways, different viewpoints of the world. And, uh, you know, that's where a lot of us uh, differ, but if we learn to respect those things. We could really establish like a working relationship. So, I mean, that's, that's really where a lot of it starts is respect. How do you, how do you see the role of social media in this integration movement? Oh man, I mean that's that's the major key. The the major key is utilizing uh, you know our ability to connect with each other. Uh, you know, and it's and it's seamless. It's very easy. Uh, people, you can just start a page. You know, just start a page on Facebook or Instagram, and uh, based on the things that you attach your interest to, you 
could, you know, connect with people around the world. And, uh, you know, I think that that's the most powerful thing that we, uh, that's the most powerful aspect of this technology that we have in our hands is being able to make positive, uh, positive connections so that we can establish, you know, some foundational change, you know, in different areas amongst the culture. You know what I mean? I agree with you. Yes. I, 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 I myself is, is, a, is a social media uh, worm. Mm -hmm. I'm on social media a lot and I, and I think is, this is partly why I'm here because of the connections I've been able to establish and so forth. Mm -hmm. I, I really appreciate you taking the time yeah. to, um, to respond to my questions. For sure. I, 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 I feel very, very, very well informed based on how you answer these questions and I'm mm -hmm. very, very gratified. Yes, sir. I, I just want to thank you very much. By the, my name is Stuart. My Stuart. name is Ron. Ron, it's pleased to meet you. I knew I may run into you again. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure. Yeah, we'll thank, be around. Thank you very much, sir. All the best. Same thank to you. you. Same to you, brother. You you will see this on um, on YouTube. YouTube, okay. I have my YouTube page. You have a card? I don't have a All card. Right. Um, I'm well, gonna I, give you. I'm um, um, Yes, you can check me out on my YouTube channel at Hewitt's Daily Workout Routine. That is Hewitt's Daily Workout Routine. And you can also Google Hewitt's Daily Workout Routine. Ron is the name of the gentleman. This ends the second part of the two-part series of Juneteenth in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 2022. Brought to you by Hewitt's Daily Workout Routine, which is my health and fitness program. Thank you for watching and bye. Again, here is where my Juneteenth ended, leaving the park with all of the excitement behind. Thank you again for watching. Thank you.